Hello. Hello. I know. An air of authority, I command. <sighs> sort of feels like I've done this once before, maybe twice. Um, anyway, welcome. Uh, welcome to our annual, sixth annual Medical Student Research Symposium. Um, I have a few words that I would like to say, and then um, it will be my esteemed pleasure to introduce tonight's uh, distinguished scholars, uh, and then we can continue with the poster session and symposium. But before that, um, I'm going to hand it over to our illustrious Dean Bowman to say a few words. I asked if I could talk, and uh, he said yes. So. I don't really want to talk long, but it's really nice to see all the suits and ties and all the posters out there uh, for more than one reason. But uh, I wanted to reiterate, as you already know, the importance of these kind of events and the posters. And uh, last Saturday, we did the University of Dayton MVH Symposium. And we had poster sessions there. And about half of them were from medical or MPH students. And half of them were from UD students. And, uh, we had uh, T.R. Reed there. So T.R. Reed was our lead-off speaker. He is a well-known NPR consult. Uh, uh, you, you hear him on NPR all the time. And he also writes books about health care and what's going to happen in health care. And he's a fascinating speaker. Uh, and he's been all over the world a gazillion times. He's written, what, what did I say there? Seven books in English and five in Jap Japanese or something like that, because he lived in Japan for a while. But one of the things I noticed about T.R. Reed is his absolute curiosity about everything. And uh, unfortunately, none of our students got to be exposed to part of what he did while he was there, which was he judged some of the posters. They were all undergraduate posters on comparative health in various countries. And so I think all these notes from T.R. Reed are going to get framed. And he was, we couldn't get him back to the luncheon because uh, back to the, thing where he was supposed to speak because he was writing out so much on each of these students' things. And then he, he was over asking all kinds of student questions. He had an ultimate curiosity. And I think that that's one of the things that we hope to instill in our medical students and our doctors is that curiosity to continue to learn, to continue to wonder, to continue to look, things, look up things, to try to figure out what's a different way or what this patient needs or more on uh, to discover through the basic sciences. So I just wanted to reinforce that it was very nice to see you. I love to see all the posters. I'm looking forward to, I, I don't know if I can get to all of them. I, I know that's a problem when you really try to read them. But um, I will also say at the symposium that I asked several students what they got out of doing the posters. And um, the answer is usually along these lines, but people ask me questions that make me think about something, that make me think differently about what I'm doing, or make me go back and look up something or think about it. And that's a lot of what this is about. So I'm very thankful that you're all participating, both the students and the judges, and all the advisors uh, who help the students with these projects. OK. Thank you, Dr. Bowman. So as I said, I am uh, proud and honored to be able to welcome you guys to uh, the annual Medical Student Research Symposium um, yet again. This marks the fifth time that I have had the privilege to stand here and welcome everybody, which is yeah, <laughs> longer than it takes to earn an MD have I been standing here. Um, but the reason that it continues to be a privilege in all seriousness is because over those five years, um, I've been able to watch med student research at this school um, grow. Grow not only in the number of students doing research, but in the quality of scholarship that they are producing. Um, and I can say this with certainty, because it's a direct function of that when we're reviewing abstracts for this event, we continually are able to increase the rigor with which we review and to increase the standards by which abstracts are accepted. Right? And if you go out there tonight, you'll see 40 wonderful examples of the output of the fantastic scholarship that we've been doing here as medical students. But I think really tonight is much more than just uh, that output, right? I mean, I think tonight is much more than just the production capacity of a little nerd sweatshop, you know? <laughs> like, I think tonight is about something real. And that real thing is the process of scholarship, 
right? The process by which we take to generate new knowledge, the process by which we take to inch us closer to better patient care, the process by which students and faculty and staff work collaboratively, grow together personally, and grow together professionally in order to create something that we can all be proud of. And that's, I think, what we're really celebrating here tonight. Not just the things that are on that poster, but every student who engages in research and every faculty member who supports those students. Because without faculty support, nothing would be possible for us. So we are indebted to you as students. Uh, so thank you to all of the faculty. And while I'm thanking people, I should um, acknowledge the others who made this event possible. So I'd like to thank Dr. Art Pickoff uh, of Department of Pediatrics, Department of Community Health, the Office of Research Affairs, possibly Batman. Um, we can't rule that one out. Um, for his continued support to Mark Willis and Ginny Bird in the Office of Research Affairs, without whom uh, we definitely could not be doing this event. Uh, Robert Fife and Kathleen Friedman of the Office of the Vice President for Research and the Dean of Graduate Studies for the University for their continued support. Um, I have a small army of med students that have helped put this together uh, that I will see if I can name from memory, but I might choke and I got a cheat sheet. So Jacob Vincent, Blake Selesky, Kevin Bree, Bijan Solari, Ahmed Hawash, Tom Cheslick, and David Cook. Uh, thank you for all of your help. And a round of applause. So that's what I have to say. So now we're going to move on to a bit more of a fun thing. Um, now we get to honor uh, four graduating med students as our distinguished scholars for the night. Um, so we choose distinguished scholars uh, as fourth year students who have, I'm just going to read the thing, demonstrated a commitment to medical scholarship. We're recognizing them for generating a significant body of scholarly work, for working collaboratively with students and faculty, and for demonstrating leadership in the research learning community, and in general, advancing student research at the School of Medicine. Um, and we have four uh, marvelous distinguished scholars this year uh, that I'm honored to present to you now. So the way this will work is I'm just gonna call you guys up in alphabetical order, and then we'll have you stand here looking embarrassed, and I'll say nice things, and then I'll ask you some questions. And it should be good fun for all of us, I think. So our first distinguished scholar in alphabetical order will be Robbie Bolu. So come on up, Robbie. You know, I think, I was just thinking, I think it was my fifth year, I think this is my wooden anniversary. I think that's what five year anniversary is. So if somebody wants to get me something, something wooden would be appropriate. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you know. Um, okay. Without further ado, Mr. Bolu, Robbie, um, whom I've known for four years uh, as an MD candidate here, obviously. He's produced a wide body of research uh, over a variety of topics. He has uh, studied predictive factors and models that can be used in assessing trauma patients with a particular evidence on emphasis on discharge disposition. He's been involved in ophthalmologic, ophthalmologic quality improvement research, most notably studying intraocular pressure spikes following selector, selective laser trabeculoplasty, right? Okay, sorry. Usually I pronounce better. Um, and in addition, uh, he's been an active uh, medical education researcher. So he surveyed uh, deans and program advisors and medical students from across the country uh, in order to assess uh, preparation for internship. After getting the results from that back, he helped, uh, along with Ray Tenike, develop a course uh, for graduating medical students to, to prepare them for internship and then also assess their preparation following completion of that course. And the one thing that Robbie did that was really cool that, that sort of made him stick out of my mind from early on is uh, when he moved on and went into the clerkships and was getting involved in other research projects and he knew he had to hand off that project, uh, he did so uh, with poise and appropriately. So a new med student came in, he made sure she was trained, he made sure she knew what she was doing, uh, and the project was able to continue. And I think that shows a, a level of maturity and understanding of the research process that we don't always see, but I think is worthy of recognition. Um, 
Also, I usually don't do this, but I just always thought this was really neat. Prior to med school, he had a Fulbright scholarship uh, for which he studied fungus. So, <laughs> there's a fungus among us. Uh, he has publications in peer-reviewed journals. He's presented work at uh, numerous regional and national conferences, as have all of our distinguished scholars. Uh, he most recently gave a podium presentation at the Academic Surgical Congress annual meeting. Um, he was a co-chair of the BSOM Journal Club, which is a part of the research learning community. Uh, he's presented his work at several medical student research symposia, as well as our translational research lecture series. He's a member of Alpha Omega Alpha, the BSOM Ophthalmology Interest Group. Um, he's the co-founder and co-chair of the Nutrition and Health Club. He designed an elective to provide additional nutritional education for med students, and the list just goes on and on. Uh, active in community service, uh, he provides patient care at Reach Out Montgomery County. He went to an Indian <coughs> reservation in Arizona for a week to also provide patient care, uh, and I've heard him present on that, and it's quite good. Um, He's organized an eyeglass collection drive, performed community glaucoma screams, mentored low-income high school students, again, on uh, nutrition and agriculture and food production. Um, and he recently matched, and so could you please tell us where? All right, uh, I'm going to UT Southwestern for ophthalmology. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A strong match. Okay, so now for the MS1s and MS2s and MS3s that are out there, um, I'm curious, why did you get involved in research, and what advice do you have for current med students interested in research? All right, well, first off, thank you very much for this award. Uh, and I think it's a, a testament to things that you can do at Wright State, because I first got involved with research through the first and second year research uh, electives offered through the research learning community. And I think that really sort of propelled my interest and ability to sort of delve deeper into the areas of medicine that I was really interested in uh, and also sort of the unique opportunity to create knowledge um, and work hand in hand with faculty members pretty much every day, which is really cool as a first and second year um, to sort of get that clinical knowledge and that clinical experience. So uh, it all started with the research electives. All right. Thank you. Okay. A big round of, a a round of applause for Robbie. <laughs> Sorry, I brought some water this time so I don't mark a Rubio all over this thing. Um, okay, our next two presenters, um, you'll have to forgive me, I'm gonna, spoiler alert, they're both neuro, so if I start to get the vapors, pardon me, because I get excited about this. Um, next, we have Dr. Uh, Gabrielle Horseman. Come on up. So I call her Dr. Horseman because she is, because she's a member of the uh, small group of students we call mud futters, so the MD, PhD students. Um, she'll be receiving her MD degree this year. She received her PhD degree in 2012. Uh, she did her PhD through our biomedical science PhD program. Her concentration was neuroscience and physiology. Um, and she worked in the laboratory of Dr. Timothy Cope. She produced an extensive body of research on the neural control of movement uh, and the reorganization of spinal circuits following uh, traumatic nerve injury. Her experiments, I can tell you because I've seen them, uh, they relied on intense and precise measurements of force production in hind limb muscles uh, from an adult rat in vivo. It's an extremely elegant uh, and difficult experimental prep to set up, but she did so masterfully. Uh, and has since led on to research that I currently am following up on. So thank you for that. Um, her dissertation was entitled Limitations of Functional Recovery of Stretch Reflex Circuitry After Peripheral Nerve Re Regeneration, in which she examined the spinal reflex circuitry that connects sensory receptors uh, of muscles in the hind limb uh, to motor neurons innervating uh, synergist muscles and antagonist muscles acting on that same joint and it was able to provide new insight into the profound discoordination of spinal reflexes that occurs following successful peripheral nerve regeneration. Um, she has presented uh, at numerous regional and international con conferences and has several manuscripts um, in progress, in preparation. She's a member of the American Academy of Neurology, the Society of Neuroscience, and the American Physician Scientists Association, where she has served as the annual meeting, uh, on the annual meeting planning committee. Um, in addition to her scientific work, 
She's participated in several community outreach and volunteer programs. Uh, she's taught neuroscience to middle and high school students in Science Olympiad. She served as an organizational director of student to student. She's mentored WSU pre-medical students, and she's worked with homeless children at the St. Vincent de Paul Apple Street Gateway Shelter, for which I have firsthand knowledge of the tremendous skill with which she can face paint a child. It is impeccable <laughs> and amazing. Daft and speedy. Um, She's been involved in clinical neuroscience curriculum development here at BSOM. She was involved in the admissions committee. Uh, she served on the medical school student council, and she's a founding member of the Medical Student Research Club, helping to organize the very first one of these that we had six years ago. So, Gabby Horseman, this is your legacy. Um, incidentally, she's also a classically trained voc vocalist and uh, a member of a local dance troupe, which is where she will be headed immediately following uh, this. Um, so Gabby, like Robbie, please tell us where you're going to residency and uh, please let us know why you got involved in research and um, what advice you have for current med students, please. I matched at Case Western for neurology, so I'll be heading there in June. And the way that I got involved in research is I ended up doing a research elective between my first and second years of medical school in Dr. Cope's lab. So I didn't actually start out MD-PhD. And what happened to me was I got the neuroscience bug. I loved spinal cord physiology so much that I spent the next six months trying to decide if I wanted to get a PhD in it. And here I am seven years later. So it's been a really long time. And my advice to all of you is to, one, take advantage of the resources that you have as first and second year medical students. Uh, the portal that we have that was uh, developed by Mark Willis is phenomenal at getting you hooked up with projects that you really want to get it into. And I encourage you to find a project that you can be really passionate about because research does is a serious time commitment. And if you can find a project that you're really passionate about, you won't mind putting in the work and you'll find yourself running home from the clinic just to work on that paper that your advisor keeps pestering you about. So. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Gabby. Oh wait, hang on. I, I don't have my things together here. I'm supposed to give you each envelopes. So Gabby and Robbie, you each get an envelope. Okay, uh, next is another mud fudder, uh, another neuroscience mud fudder, uh, Dr. Ann Imber. Please, come on down. So Dr. Imber also completed her uh, biomedical sciences PhD training with a concentration in neuroscience and physiology. Uh, she defended her dissertation successfully in 2012, and she worked in the laboratory of Dr. Robert Putnam. Um, she produced an extensive, extensive uh, body of research on the neural control of breathing uh, and the generation of sleep apnea and panic disorder. Um, her experiments used whole cell patch clamping uh, using an in vitro brainstem slice preparation. Again, extremely difficult and extremely elegant and precise and so impressive anytime somebody can do it. So my hat's off. Um, her dissertation was entitled The Role of Calcium in Central Respiratory Control Neurons of the Locus Ceruleus development of the chemosensitive break. And in this dissertation, she examined the intracellular signaling pathways of very specific and very tiny um, acid-sensitive neurons in the brainstem. This work provided new insight not only to the role of calcium in these cells and thus in the neural control of ventilation, but also provided new insight uh, into the pathogenesis of disorders involving altered respiratory drive, like sleep apnea and panic disorder. It was very cool. Um, she has several publications in peer-reviewed journals. She has several more uh, in preparation. She's, again, presented at regional, national, and international conferences. Um, having gone through the PhD program, with Anne being a few years ahead of me, I was always impressed by the dedication and determination that she always showed. Um, whenever there was a chance to present her work, she always jumped at it. Uh, and I remember one time early on, I think maybe the second of these events, she gave a small data blitz presentation. And I said, oh, Anne, thanks for doing this, and she said, I always look forward to an opportunity to practice. And I said, all right, well, glad we could do it. 
Um, in 2010, she received a graduate fellowship award from the American Heart Association Great Rivers Affiliate to study the role of calcium in central card cardiorespiratory control neurons. Uh, she's been an active and long-time participation in the research learning community. As I said, she's presented her work orally. She is a three-time winner, which is a hat trick, of the Best Basic Science and Translational Research Poster Award. Um, that's 50% of the time, so we've given it out that they're hers. Uh, in addition to her scientific work, uh, she has extensive teaching experience and participated in community service outreach and volunteer programs, including after-school tutoring at the St. Vincent Paul Apple Street Gateway Shelter, providing patient care at Reach Out Montgomery County, and giving health awareness demonstrations to local grade school kids through student to student. So, um, Ann Ember, same questions. Please tell us where you're going to residency and why you got into research and what advice you have for the masses. Thank you. All right. So I'm going home to visit family for a while in Florida and in internal medicine, and then we'll see where I can come up with after that. I'd like to stay in research. So I kind of cheated. I was very extensively involved in research before I came to medicine. Um, at one point, though, I kind of stopped and thought, well, one, I kind of miss people, and two, um, I really like the idea of what research might be able to do for medicine and to try to improve current practices. So I'm still trying to pursue that. Advice for people getting into it, I agree with everything everybody's saying so far. Uh, being enthusiastic and passionate about your work is pretty much an absolute necessity. Also though, if you can find people that you can work with, either graduate students or mentors, it will really help you to use that passion and work where it can most help you, which is kind of important because we're kind of time limited. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Oh, your envelope. I keep forgetting the envelope. Okay, and our fourth, last but certainly not least, um, distinguished scholar for whom, where is my cheat sheet? I found it. All right, Catherine Ullman, please come on down. Everyone gets to watch me turn bright red. Well. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, Catherine Ullman. Um, has generated a truly, truly extensive body of research um, in both dermatological research as well as medical education. So she has been involved in characterizing dermatologic diseases as well as assessing medical student proficiency in diagnosing and treating these diseases. She's been actively involved in other medical education research projects, including studying the effects of medical student personal and academic habits on exam performance, longitudinal assessment of progress testing, and the specific factors that may influence a medical student's choice of specialty. Um, she has several publications in peer-reviewed journals. She's co-authored a textbook chapter. Um, she has presented at numerous regional and national conferences. In 2013, her poster entitled Herpes Zoster and a Two-Year-Old Vaccinated Against Varicella won third place uh, at the Ohio Dermatological Society meeting, um, which is something BSOM can be very proud of. Um, she has been actively involved in the research learning community, as have all of our distinguished scholars. So she has presented numerous times um, orally at translational research lecture series, as well as uh, giving poster presentations in previous iterations of tonight. Last year, she won best poster for medical education research, as I recall. Um, in addition to her scientific work, she's highly involved in the uh, dermatology interest group. She founded the pathology interest group. She's a member of Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Society. Um, she has uh, participated in the AOA Canned Food Drive. She's provided nutritional educational information to local charter school students. She's mentored WSU pre-medical students. Um, she's you know, always involved in the community skin cancer screening, providing edu AIDS education to grade school students. I mean, on and on and on. Um, so without further ado, Kathy, please tell us what you matched, where you matched, uh, why you did research, and advice. So four questions. Okay. I matched over at OSU in dermatology, and how, let's see, why I got into research. Um, I think I was pretty fascinated with how we go from, you know, being that first year medical student to, you know, choosing our specialty um, and just getting to fourth year successfully. And as, you know, I went along in that process, I found, you know, questions that I found interesting. So I definitely go along with, you have to be passionate about it or you're not going to want to go home and, you know, enter all that data from your 80 surveys that you just did. But if you're interested in the answer, then it's not really work. Um, the next question. Oh, advice. Uh, my advice would definitely be do, do the research learning elective if you're interested in research. 
I don't think I would have done any research during medical school if I hadn't done that. There's such great uh, uh, just help, you know, it mentors. Um, it's wonderful here. And as far as people that I'd like to thank, because of course I have to thank everyone that I've worked with, uh, Mark Willis and Adam for doing the research learning and getting us involved in the elective. Um, for Derm, Dr. Gandhi, Dr. Trevino, and Dr. Krishnamurthy, who I've worked with on multiple things. And then Dr. Bell and Dr. Binder in family medicine. And then, of course, Dr. Borges, who, oh my gosh, I don't think I'd have done anything if it wasn't for her. And she's going to block me from her email very soon. But she can't get rid of me. <laughs> so thank you, Dr. Borges. Okay. Okay, thanks, Kathy. Um, thanks again to all of our distinguished scholars. Please um, feel free to bother them while they're out in the poster session. Um, before we move out there, so it's just about time for the poster session and judging. Before we move out there, um, I want to uh, specifically acknowledge the 29 faculty members that are judging posters for us this year. Um, it is a tremendous service that you're providing to the students to judge posters. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to be guaranteed that they will talk to at least two faculty members tonight when they talk about their poster. So please challenge them, please engage them. Um, student presenters, please uh, try to keep your time with them down to about 10 minutes or so just so that they can move through and we can get everything done in a reasonable amount of time. Um, the 29 faculty that we have, you students, are a real tour de force of BSOM uh, clinical and basic science faculty. It is an impressive list uh, that comprises a large core of our, uh, of our education. So uh, thank them when you see them. And without further ado, uh, let's move out there. Judges, if you haven't picked up your score packets, we have a table out there for them. And uh, let's have fun, because it's a celebration. Thank you. <laughs>